Hi, I'm Brian Price of the School of St. George. Here are some new notes on footwork. The key thing, remembering uh, with all the footwork and the way that the school interprets it, is that you never want to compromise your fighting platform. The elephant with the tower on its back is the foundation from which all the other maneuvers are possible. So we don't want to gather our steps, we don't want to cross the feet in any way, and we don't want to lunge because these things create an unstable fighting platform. If you've got a copy of the sword in two hands, uh, you might notice that the stance, typically the back foot, is a little more anchored, like so. In the intervening years, we've understood now, I think, that really you need to bring that front foot forward so you spring off, strongly emphasizing the weight on the ball of the foot. The heels are actually up completely off the ground, more like a boxer um, than sort of a traditional reenactor fighter. Uh, if you see this from the side, you see the, start, the difference between here and here. In this position, I'm emphasizing this calf muscle and the ability of that calf muscle to spring off into the fight and drive rapidly into the fight. So this is the kind of footwork you want to maintain at all times. Keeping the feet kind of shoulder width apart is a primary objective, maybe a little bit wider, wider than sometimes a lot of people want to go. A lot of folks will get sort of up in here, bring their weight up, and then start casting the sword, particularly with the lighter uh, simulators, we'll try to cast forward for a target. But Fury doesn't do a lot of this. And we don't do a lot of it in the Scola. Instead, what tries to happen is try to bring the hilt down. This is following especially the Getty manuscript, where the text is very much oriented towards stabilitas and anchoring, bringing the whole earth with you when you go, with all blows. If you're casting about, you're not really doing that. And while that may strike your opponent with a discomforting blow, um, it isn't really the kind of military power that I think Fiore likes to see. So it's definitely not what we like to see. So instead, we're going to move aggressively with these positions. Now the accresore in the new interpretation really doesn't change how we execute the footwork in practice, at least not from a core level. It provides some more options perhaps, but the basic thing remains the same. So on an accresore, you're going to move and widen the stance a little bit. So just widening it briefly. Now, this can be done with the front foot. Perhaps you're trying to set the point on the opponent. That's possible. Remember always to keep the tip supported by the base, so there's no sense of ever reducing the blade this way. It's always an upward sort of orientation. Um, but you can also use it as a decresseré, so, or what we used to use as a decresseré. So you might strike, reset with an acres, which resets the point, and then drive through aggressively, finishing off your punta or thrust. So the accresore means simply to widen the stance, to increase the space between the feet. This is still experimental, I think, um, but it's worth experimenting with. We're getting a lot of benefit out of it, uh, particularly this one play, which if you look at play five um, in our elephant program, which is finding the point, this is a new way to do it. Really what it does is it adds a mezza volta onto the um, different ways to find the point. So you strike, reset, and drive straight back in. Not complicated. Very, very simple, very foundational. Instead of always having to drive directly into the target, in which case you may, buy, you may not have an opportunity to set the point, instead, here, we set, come back, and then fire. So the whole thing ends up looking something like this. Strike, reset, and fire, sort of at that speed. Then, of course, you never want to give up the fight, so even on your exit, you're trying to make it so you've got something to work with. The digress array, by um, contrast, Fury only talks about in one place. It's the one that we use is slipping the leg. And what he'll do is he'll slip the leg in and return fire. Yes, he may do that. However, the way I'm teaching that play typically is instead of slipping the leg back and gathering it up and then firing, instead it looks more like this, where you're simply passing to the rear, striking, and because you're still on the wall of the feet, you still strongly drive forward when the opportunity comes, and it will come. The passe, or the paso, or the pasare is the verb, paso is the noun, is the same. You simply step with a complete pass. Remember, the difference between a paso, which is where the, all of my um, potential energy is on this side, stays on that side. With a paso step, I haven't changed anything in the upper body. I still have some power here. Not as much as I had with this hip back, but I still have sufficient power. Now, if I do a mezzo volta by contrast, and some people have asked about this, I'm changing sides. I'm either striking with a blow, so now I'm charged with this hip on this side, or 
I may just change sides. Still, now this hip is charged and powering the blow through. So, to summarize, the Cresso, all it is now is increasing the step a little bit. You might set the point doing this. Um, you might use it to strike if you're already in distance. Um, the back foot may or may not follow. Depends on what you're doing, how you want to run it. The day Cresso is a slight gathering of the feet, usually only a little tiny bit. And then movement out, although I'm not going to teach that very much because I don't think that um, gathering the feet up is a terribly good idea when there's wrestling involved. Um, and then the paso remains what it was. Integral to all of these, though, is the core tendency to try to keep this back foot forward, keep the hands and weight down, starkly pointed at the opponent, and driving aggressively forward, almost like a sprinter. So when you end up working on the bag, it'll look more like this. Notice the intention to harness the power at every point during the blows. You can do a three or five minute workout in a bag like that. Uh, work on keeping your, your feet in that position, your back foot back. Um, take a look at the pictures in the manuscript and you'll see that there's a lot more uh, distance between the feet than we usually keep. I'm Brian Price for the School of St. George. Until next time.